Hello everyone, thank you for watching. My name is David. This is my weekly Q&A videos, part two. If you missed part one, please go back and watch it. What I'm doing is I'm answering you guys' questions from last week. Any questions you guys have, please, this week, go down below in the comment section. Ask me anything you want and I'll answer them in the next Q&A video next Monday. Okay? So, please, ask questions. Um, the next question is from Irene, and I don't know where you're from. Please, people, give us your locations. I like to know, and so do a lot of people, like to know where you are from, where you are at, where you reside, where you live. Because we want to know that we aren't alone in this. This is one of the most isolating things in the world, okay? And it feels horrible, and we feel like we're the only ones experiencing this, and it's great to know that we're not alone. And it's great to know that it's affecting other people around the world, okay? So if you can do that, I'd appreciate it. Let us know where you're at. Thank you. Uh, next question is from Irene, and we don't know where you're from. Well done. Firstly, you really do answer everything. Well, thank you, Irene. Thank you. Can you love bomb the narcissist? Would this be of a hidden help to yourself? Uh, you can do whatever you want. I don't know how it would be help to yourself. I don't know. I can't. I, I tried to think of a situation and I can't. Um, a lot of times people believe they're in situations where they can't leave the narcissist or, or maybe they are in a situation where they can't leave and they don't know what to do and they just want to survive and get through it and this and that. And so we teach people to gray rock, to show no emotion, to not do anything. I don't think that's a good idea. I mean, it's toxic behavior. It's sick. It's ugly, gross behavior. We don't like love bombing. That's a bad thing. People who are unhealthy think it's a good thing. That's why you guys thought the beginning of your relationship was really, really great. Because they were love bombing the hell out of you. I hope in the future, when someone love bombs you, you say, Ew, gross. I don't like that. Stay away. It, that's, what, that's the normal reaction. So, anyways, I, I wouldn't recommend you do that to a narcissist at all. No. We don't want to act sick, uh, even if we are sick. We want to act healthy. We fake it till we make it, right? So let's not do this type of behavior. No, uh, and I don't see how it could benefit you. If you're, if you're, you have to deal with a the narcissist, then we 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 don't do much. We don't show emotion. We we don't say I really like you. I really love you. You're so great. None of this stuff. And we don't say things that we don't mean, because that's manipulative. And it's lying. And if you, you're against lying and manipulation and stuff like this, you're just going to lose who you are and feel like crap if you do that. Okay? I hope that makes sense. Thanks. Lynn from the United States of America. Hello, Lynn. Why do narcissists provoke? Whether things are calm or not, there always seems to be something coming from out of the blue. A provocation. Why? Good question, Lynn. Good question. Manipulative, narcissistic, antisocial people provoke. That's how they navigate. They have to provoke, provoke, provoke. As most of you know, I'm being smeared by another YouTube channel. This person has been doing this for two years. And all this person does, all their life, they're like 50, in their 50s now, they just provoke. It's not just me, they, they're provoking other channels. They were provoking another channel recently and the channel had to close down and got rid of their videos because they just kept provoking and attacking them. Antisocial people are typically very social. If, if you guys understand what antisocial means, it's not, I don't talk. I'm not social. No, antisocial means your behaviors go against the grain of society, but you tend to be, a lot of people with antisocial personality disorder, a lot of sociopaths, psychopaths, are extremely social, extremely charming. They're out there all the time, partying, they got pictures on their Facebook of them partying in clubs and smiling and laughing, they do all that, they think, you know, like life's great, you might think, if you're looking at them, they're so social, but they're pro provoking. They live their life by provocation. The person attacking me lives their life by provocation, provokes everybody and attacks everyone. They're trying to be accepted. They're trying to get the things they need. So whenever you wonder why somebody is doing what they're doing, it's usually they're trying to meet their emotional needs. They just don't know how to go about it. That's why they look funny, weird, nasty, gross, what, why they're doing it, right? So if some emotional needs are security, Emotional security. So instead of me just asking 
Do you love me? Can you show that you love me? Um, honey, I don't like you going out with your specific friends tonight because your specific friends, has one of them cheated on her husband, you said, last week. You know, one of them, while you guys were out, she was out making out with another guy. I'd rather you not go out with her. It doesn't, it makes me feel a little insecure. So that's, do you see that? That's one way of me get, making sure that I maintain security in my relationship. Another way is, oh honey, you're going out with your friends tonight? Cool, I'm going to go out with Lisa. And she's like, wait, wait, wait what, huh? I, I'm going out with my friends, you're going out with a girl, Lisa? And I'm like, oh yeah, it's just a girl. No big deal, from work. And then you're like, well, Lisa told you, you told me that Lisa said she thought you had a nice butt a couple months ago. She was flirting with you. Oh yeah, but she, so she was just flirting with me. Now I'm going to go out with her. So I, now that would be me trying to get you to show me that you won't leave me, that you like me. I'm trying to get security, but I don't know how to do it. Just ask for it, right? So I'm manipulating. You see, I'm triangulating. I'm getting security that way. So like the person attacking me is just trying to be accepted. She's just trying to be accepted in society. She, she needs a status within social groups. She needs competence and achievement, meaning and purpose. And her way of doing that is provoking people and attacking them and getting into fights with them and abusing them and making them look like they're a bad person so that they look like they're a good person. That's how this person's doing that. But when you watch what they're doing, you're like, why are they doing it? It doesn't make any sense. Just trying to meet emotional needs. So that's what, that's what someone you know, that's why they're provoking you. Even when things seem to be okay. Things only seem to be okay to you, maybe not to them, right? Maybe this person has a massive fear of abandonment. So every time things seem to be okay, they think that you're going to leave them. So they provoke you to find out and they tell by your reaction and they do something mean to you and you, and you go, why are you doing that? I love you. Don't do that. And they're like, oh, okay. You do love me. Okay. Okay. I get it. Do you see that? Hope that makes sense. Um, yeah. People, narcissists provoke. Narcissists can't get what they want on their own, what they need. They can't meet their own needs. They manipulate and use people. They're dependent on other people to do that for them. So they are going to constantly provoke. Constantly. Hope that makes sense. Thank you. Anna from Syracuse, New York. Hello, Anna. How does feeling my emotions help with dealing with all this mix of emotions? I am waiting for my divorce to finalize and I am reading and answering emails from my ex-husband. I feel sad, bad, mad, and I think I'm so good at handling this. You say it's important to recognize and feel your emotions. And it is, Anna, because if we ignore, just, just example, right? If you ignore how you feel, you don't close and, and, and process emotion, okay? So you said you feel sad. That's an open emotion. You, feel, you said you feel bad. That's another emotion. You said you feel mad. There's another emotion. And I bet we could have a lot more. More emotions, more emotions, more emotions, more emotions, more emotions. Have all these emotions in our life to where we feel kind of unstable and we might feel impulsive and we might do something we regret. We might make mistakes. I feel sad. Why do I feel sad? Because of this. Is there something I can do about it? Yes, there is. Good. That makes me feel not so sad anymore. I feel mad. Why do I feel mad? Because my, hus my ex-husband won't sign the divorce papers and keeps provoking me. What can I do? Is there anything I can do about it? I can stop talking to him. I can stop reading the messages. I can stop looking at the emails, the texts, right? And then I did something about it and now the anger tends to go away because I'm not seeing it anymore. Uh, what was the other one? Sad, mad, and you feel bad. Okay, why do you feel bad? Whatever bad is. I feel bad because of what my husband's ex-husband's doing to me. So I'm going to not do this anymore and make that go away. So now some of these emotions, I'm going to close them. They, I feel better on some of them. I have less emotions in my life right now. I feel a little bit more stable. I can make better choices. We cannot ignore emotion. You can't ignore emotion and be happy in your life and experience joy. 
You have to experience the bad things in your life to experience the good things in your life. And, and the reason we don't is because we don't know how to process these things. They get too big and scary for us. We don't know what to do. And so we ignore them. We numb them. We suppress them. We stay at work all day. We have to learn how to do this to control our lives. Or you will be at work all day, Anna. You will work too much and make commitments to people that you don't really want. You'll make mistakes. You, you, you might send him another email. You might reply to him and start getting into this argument that he wants to get into with you when that's not good for you so how do we meet our emotional needs we're in tune with our emotions which are our body doing things and that's how we know what we need and that's how we know to give ourselves what we need if we don't do this if we don't deal with our emotions process them give them attention they get bigger and bigger and bigger till we can't we can't deal with them anymore. They control us. Hope that makes sense. Thank you, Anna, very much for asking. 2018 music from New Hampshire, I think, NH, New Hampshire, I think. Could a childhood tra traumatic brain injury, car accident contribute to narcissistic personality disorder? Um, you're asking me a scientific question, and, and I've studied this a lot, and I'm, I'm not going to say no, but realize that NPD is a developmental disorder during childhood, okay? So traumatic brain injury is not what causes narcissistic per personality disorder. However, traumatic brain injuries can make someone have zero empathy. That does happen. And that's a criteria for narcissistic personality disorder. It does not mean that they're a narcissist. There are plenty of people in this world that have zero empathy and they're not a nar narcissist, okay? Hope that makes sense. Could it happen? I, I, in the medical texts, I think they say no. I think they say borderline might be able to happen that way. I think. I could be wrong. Um, feel free to look it up and correct me. I just really don't know. I, I would say no because it's a, it's a developmental disorder, not a trauma injury disorder. Does that make sense? Thanks. Irene, don't know where you're from. Please leave us your locations, everybody. Irene asks, I can't go. I have to stay. So what is the best way to do this without him being too cold or angry? Which is hard because he seems to me as if he wants to be angry with me about anything. Unlike the way we were just a few months ago. I'm sorry, Irene. There is no way. There's no way to be with somebody who is always angry and... What did you say? Uh without him being too cold or angry. Well, that's the way he is, right? So you're gonna try to make him not be that way. So that's just be the best victim you can be, Irene. Let him just really abuse you and do everything he says and do it really well and don't complain and don't want anything, don't need anything, never say no and never ask for anything and never bring anything up, okay? And just, just nourish him with compliments. And he's still going to be angry and too cold because he has a personality disorder and he's probably objectified you at this point, taken away all your humanity and resents you and hates you. It's not going to get better. It is not going to change. There are no secrets, Irene. There is one answer and that's leave. Get help, get support. I, I don't know what to tell you. Except, Irene, don't show emotion. Don't have a self. Irene wants something, who cares? Irene needs something, who cares? Irene feels something, who cares? You do not have a self. Everything's about him, okay? That's how you do it. Good luck. KM from Arizona. I'm not okay. I can't sleep and hurt every day. I need my head to stop spinning. I went no contact with everyone after the accidental death of my spouse. It was strangers that showed kindness. Now I realize she had a personality disorder and I'm consumed to make sense of this. I'm grieving a person I did not know. I'm trying to give myself closure. I'm trying to not badmouth my ex, but I want everyone to know she has secrets from all of us. I respect her still and still have love in my heart. I was in a relationship for 17 years and the flying monkeys are so cruel. My therapist states I'm grieving 
but David, I'm scared. I don't trust anyone. Is this new? Is this the new me? Your suggestions help me get through the moment. Thank you for your valuable time. I am awfully, awfully sorry for what you're going through. That's horrible. You lost your spouse to 17 years and now you realize you've been abused for 17 years and people are attacking you. That's just awful. I am very, very sorry. Um, is this the new new? New you? No, you've lost you. You don't know who you are right now. You are somewhere else away from you, out of touch. Here's you, here's yourself. See that? You've compromised yourself. And not just discovering this, you've been doing it for 17 years. You've been married to somebody and agreeing with stuff you don't agree with. You've been going against who you are. You've said, honesty, I am an honest person. And you've maybe even lied. But you've accepted lies from them and didn't stop it, didn't call them out, accepted it, continued. You, you, maybe they cheated on you and you believe cheating is wrong. That you stayed in a relationship with somebody who's cheated on you. You've compromised yourself and you compromise, 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 compromise till you're so far gone there's nothing left really. So this isn't the new you. You need to come back and find yourself again. Okay? And we need to start actualizing and defining yourself more and more. Define your, have, have a better version of you than you've ever had. That's what you need. Okay? This is a process. I help my clients with this process and other professionals can help you with this too. I suggest you find someone to do that. You need help and you need support. You need people there on your side, by your side, with you, helping you big time. Do not isolate. Don't do it. Get rid of all these people that are bad to you, but hold on to the people that are not bad to you, okay? right now if you can afford it hire people to help you more than one two therapists three therapists and five life coaches I'm not kidding I'm so sorry for where you are it can get a lot better this will be behind you someday what you do with this is very important good luck Ashley from New Jersey hey David can a narcissistic woman manipulate a man into an affair he never wanted to have I, I guess so, Ashley. And if you're asking, because if you're asking about a boyfriend or husband, I am very sorry that someone cheated on you and blamed the woman. We don't do that. So if that's the case, and who cares? Even if it's not the case, Ashley, people need to be accountable and responsible for their own behaviors and their own mistakes. Okay? So he may have been weak. He may have compromised who he was and lost himself. He may, have, he may not know how to handle, how to ask for what he wants. He may not know how to have a good relationship. He may have all these feelings in this relationship and didn't know how to process them. All these things, right? But, but he did what he wanted to do. He made his choices. And if he's blaming some woman, huh, then that's the kind of man you have. You have a man that you have this much confidence in because some woman could come along and make him do it, right? That is somebody who does not know who the hell they are. If they tell you, because all you got to do, Ashley, is say, is honesty and cheating, is, or say, is honesty and loyalty important to you? And if he says, yes, they are, say, so you cheated, right? If that's important to him and he cheated, then he doesn't know who the hell he is right now. He must feel horrible. Right? And the only way to fix that, to get back to who he was, to say, I did this, I made a mistake, and I don't like it, I'm never going to do it again. If he wants to blame somebody else, he's probably going to do it again. I'm just saying, okay? Is it possible for a woman to manipulate a man? It's possible. Anything's possible. I've been manipulated to do crazy things, sure. But I also didn't know who I was very well then. Because people can't manipulate me to do these things now. It's the kind of man you're dating, or have been with. Marty Gracia from Michigan. Hello. What is a religious narcissist, David? Well, I think it's just that, right? A religious nar someone, a narcissist who is religious. Unfortunately, I've recently met someone who I believe is one. 
So you tell me, what is a religious nurse? <laughs> and as much as I've come to detest him for his new intrusion into my life, He's now complicating the situation by bringing up religion. What is the best and fastest way to be rid of a freak? Okay, so we have unwanted attention or being harassed. What's the best way? So try to realize what you may be doing, okay? Because I can get rid of people that do this, try to do this to me. I, it doesn't continue. So, And it's typically what I'm doing. So you want to know what you should do, right? Pay attention to what you are doing. So a lot of people like this, all we have to do is answer the phone. Hello? And they'll just keep calling and hanging up. I'm serious. I've had people do this to me for years. Call me, hang up. Call me, hang up. Call me, hang up. And all I do, as long as I keep answering, hello? 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 It just continues. I stopped answering my phone one day. It stopped. Okay? Pay attention to what you're doing. You might still be talking to them. If you want to get rid of someone, stop talking to them. If you want to get rid of someone, stop being nice to them. Okay? We tell them and we're very direct. I wish to not talk to you anymore. Do not contact me ever again. If they continue to do it, then you need to start deciding if you're going to take uh, uh, more preventative measures. Like going to the police and contacting a lawyer, things like this. Give it some time. Usually people fall off fall away. If they get nothing from you long enough, they usually go away. Okay? Usually people keep continuing this kind of stuff because they're getting something from it. Okay? Uh, I hope that helps. Um, it is just extremely common that narcissists are attracted to religion. People with personality disorders are attracted to religion. People that are psychotic are very attracted to religion. They need help. They're looking for answers. They don't know where to go. So they, they go to God. Last question is from Annette from Poland. Hello, Annette. I left a narcissist a year ago. There is still horrible hoovering. I've read the articles and the books about narcissists. I know everything, but I still can't get no contact. We're in the same history reconstruction group. I can't resist his fake tears and begging, and I still listen to him. How do I not give away my empathy to that creative, or sorry, creature? How, how do I not give away my empathy to that creature and lose my mind? We take drastic measures, Annette. And if, if you've been dating this person and it was codependent, it was toxic, there was enmeshment, no responsibility, then you, after it's over, we think like, I can't leave this group because he's going to think I'm doing it because of him. So, Annette, leave the group. No, I really like the group. Okay. All right. Prioritize. I really like the group. I really hate his harassment. Which one's bigger? The group? You really like the group. It's, the group's worth it. The harassment's not as bad. I can take it. Okay. I, you know, and that, like I said, the last person, be aware of your what you're doing. Okay. S stop thinking that we need to be nice and respect people, everyone in the world. We don't. Enemies are okay to have, right? Simply just somebody I don't care for and somebody I will not ever talk to. That's an enemy, right? So that should be, he sh he's an enemy. Stop being nice. Stop talking to him. You said that you are, da -da. I can't resist his fake tears and begging. I still listen to him. It's got to stop, right? We need to do something about that. And if you're continuing to go to the group, you need to prevent this from happening. So we stay away from him. On the group. If he comes near me, we need to tell him, stay away from us. Get your lawyer to say, stay away from him. Tell the leader of the group what's going on and ask the leader to tell them to stay away from you. If it's bad enough, Annette, stay away from the group for a little while. Take a break. Find something else to do. Find a different group. Go back to the group in 90 days when you're stronger. Okay? Take a stance. Make a point. Let this guy know how serious you are. Stay out of sight out of smell, and out of sound, and out of touch from this person, okay? 
If someone's obsessed with you, how do we stop that when they see you every day and you're being nice? We need to really understand everything that's happened, okay? If this guy's abused you, why are you being nice to him if it hurts you? I know it's up to us who we are, how we treat people is important, and we need to be good to people. I get that. But not if it's hurting you. You should be angry. People that cross your boundaries should anger you. He's crossing your boundaries. Why doesn't that anger you? Something's going on. You, anybody want to piss me off? Cross my boundaries. God, that makes me so angry, especially when I tell you not to and you do it again. Oh, man. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Okay? It's about how you feel about yourself if you want to know. That's the answer. Know how wonderful and amazing and beautiful you are and you won't care about this person anymore. Thank you all very much. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. And like I said in part one, you don't live in America and you don't celebrate you know, our holiday of Thanksgiving. This is a great time of year to, be, to, to reflect, to look back on the whole year and, and realize what you have that's positive, what you have to be thankful for and give that thanks, okay? Attitude is everything. Attitude is everything. And I can say the world's horrible and everyone's horrible in it. And I'm going to die next year. That's not how I got here. Thanks, guys. Love yourself first. I'll see you next Monday. Try and enjoy the holiday. Take care of you guys. Take care of yourself. Bye. Thanks.